It's been a while. I'm still alive. The reason I didn't post for a long time was because my laptop bricked and my SSC completely wiped, meaning I lost all the footage I had and also no longer had a gaming PC to use. So I kind of lost the motivation to post anything for a while. But Jade is out now and I feel like I need to post something because she is a very good partner for Blade. And as a Blade main, I feel obligated to release my thoughts on her. I know I'm super late to the party and that there's a lot of content creators already making content about Jade, but I purposely avoided watching any of them so that I can give my own take on her before I get influenced by what other people think. So this video is going to show you how I decided to use Jade and Blade after some tinkering around with builds and playstyles. And I'll show you first how they perform in Memory of Chaos specifically MOC 11 because of the enemy typing. I'm going to share today two examples of a zero cycle, one with my standard build that I'm running for basically any content right now. So it has my blade at 132 speed and Branya at 160 speed and Jade speed kind of doesn't matter. And how this works is Jade will bring blade speed up to 162 overtaking Branya. However, for the very, very first turn, Blade won't be able to overtake Branya, and so Branya will just kind of use a basic attack to build some extra skill points. And this isn't optimal, but the other way you could do it is you could use Branya's skill initially and just hope her E1 wins you the 50-50 so you can have a skill point for Blade. But then you're kind of relying on RNG. My other showcase is specifically for the most comfy zero cycle. So Blade is going to drop down to 129 speed, and Branya is going to go down to 151 speed. So I'm going to be trading speed for more damage. You'll also see that I'm not running the Jade Vonwak tech, and that's because the pieces I farmed for that were so dog water that I definitely lose damage over the course of the fight if I had to hard force that comp. So I'm sticking to a pretty casual friendly version of the Jade Blade team using the usual relic sets you'd probably give them because this is probably what most people would run anyways. Okay, shifting attention now to the actual showcase. So as you can see, this is a sustainless team. And the reason I'm running no sustain is just because for zero cycles, you usually want as much damage as possible. The risk of running no sustain is, as you can see, my Robin's almost dead. So if they're not tanky enough or if they get over targeted, your your run could wipe if an important character dies. So stainless blade teams are a little comfier just because blade himself is so tanky that he's never really the one dying. And for this fight, I think the most annoying thing is if you let the hand activate, your run could end if it targets the wrong character. And so in this case, the run was quite smooth because I managed to kill the hand before it went off. As for my teams, so this is my standard build. It's not optimized because ideally I want the relic set to be inert cell auto, but I don't have any pieces with speed on inert cell auto, so Blade won't be able to break the 130 speed threshold. Jade is using a standard damage set. Robin is just running as much as as much attack as possible, and Branya is at 160 speed. Okay, so I'm going to show you my second showcase. This one is a much easier zero cycle. I basically trade some speed for more offensive stats. The reason this can work is because for the very first cycle, you only really need 134 speed or more, and so 160 speed is kind of overkill. So here you can see that I auto with Branya again. As I explained, this is because skill points are very, very hard to come by later on in the round. So building skill points early is important. And since Blade can't overtake her anyways, her skill would kind of be wasted a little bit. Also, the first wave of enemies is usually much weaker than the second wave. So you can get away with suboptimal play in the first wave because you'll still be able to clear them without having without using like everything at your disposal. 
I think here using Branya's ultimate is actually the correct play. I saved it for the second wave, but honestly, I don't think it makes a difference. And if anything, it wasted one of Jade's turns, which is kind of important because the less turns she takes, the less skill points she consumes. So here, I'm going to bring up Blade, and I'm going to let Blade auto attack first, and then ult. One reason for doing this is so that Blade can get another turn. If I ult first, Blade won't get an extra turn. And the other thing is, it will give him more HP, so he's harder to kill. So Jade needs to reapply at this point, but I think I have enough skill points so that I should be fine for the rest of the fight. Okay, so the hand took Jade, which I think is fine. I feel like Blade is the one you don't want them to take. I'm bringing up Robin here because, because it's the end of the cycle, so I need her to do her action advance again. So now with Blade being able to go again, he's going to release Jade, and Jade is going to have lots of follow-up attacks stacked up. I think I was debating who I should use my Branya skill on. I'm not sure who was the right one, but either way, I have enough damage to clear out Spyrog. So this was with a specifically tailored zero cycle team. That's why it was a lot smoother than my other run. Basically the only difference is, is I exchanged the planar ornaments from Rudolin Arena to Inner Salsado. And then for Branya, I lowered her speed from 160 to 151 and gave her more crit damage.